Hey everyone, this is Pastor Tyler Doker with Great Harvest Baptist Church. So I just want to go over another flat earth moment. I want to do it on planets. So what I want to go over is we're going to start off in the 1611 version of the King James Bible. And the reason that I want to do this is because when you have a preconceived notion of what a planet is, when you read it in the Bible, you're automatically going to think whatever your mind has already been taught to think. So if you think terrestrial plane, when you hear the word planet, automatically when you read that word, that's, gonna, that's what will pop into your head. But what I want you to do is just forget all that. Let's just look at the Bible. Let the Bible judge what we believe and do not come in with any preconceived notions. Because I could understand if you think a planet is a terrestrial plane that people land on and that's just hurtling through space and um, it, every planet's different. Some are very hard, some are more soft, you know, some are gas. Then you're going to have all these preconceived notions. But what I want you to do is just let's look at the Bible. And the reason I'm starting in the 1611 is because most people have a preconceived notion of the word planet. But it's amazing, in the 1611 version of the Bible, there's nothing wrong with the word planet but there's something wrong with the way people interpret it. So if the word planet is just you is just interpreted properly as a ball of light, then there's nothing wrong with the word. And there still is nothing wrong with the word. But the reason I'm going to the 1611 is so you can see what the, there's a little um, asterisk next to the word planet. And what it says, I'm gonna show this in the video, but I'm just gonna read it for you now. It says, I'm going to read the original from um, the 1769. It says in 2 Kings 23, verse 5, And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah, in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, which is the devil, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. So notice, there's that word planets. Well, let's look at it in the 1611. And what it says is, it quotes the same exact, every single word's the same, except right before the word planets, there's these two dash lines. And those two dash lines are symbolizing something, and if you just look to the left of the page, it gives you another word that could be used for that word planets. And the two options it gives you, it says, or, 12 signs or constellations. So our two other options other than the word planets, according to the 1611, which is still God's perfect preserved word, are 12 signs or constellations. So all those words mean the same thing, but not when you have a preconceived notion of what planets are. So if you have no pre preconceived notion, then planets can be interchangeable with 12 signs. Planets can be interchangeable with constellations, and constellations can be interchangeable with 12 signs. But let's just look at these two words then, the 12 signs or constellations. Let's say we use those two words instead of this preconceived idea we had of planets. Well, let's look at it. First, let's look at 12 signs, because that's the first option they give us. Well, if we look in Genesis 1, in verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. But notice what it says. And let them be for signs. So God made lights, lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons and for days and years. Remember, 12 signs was another option it was giving us. But notice what it's saying. The operative word there is not signs. It's lights. So these planets that people have this idea that they're just terrestrial plane, what they actually are are lights. According to the Bible, they are lights. And let's just read on. It says, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So they're not out in this fake thing called space. They're within the firmament of the heaven, and they're to give light upon the earth. Another important point to make about why it's called the 12 signs, well, in modern day 
science or modern day astrology, what they do is they divide the orbit. So if you think of the planets orbiting in a 360 degree circle on a flat earth, the planets are orbiting in a 360 degree circle and the 15 degrees wide. So they're not orbiting in a perfect circle. So the 15 degree wide um, orbit they are taking, which is 15 degrees wide all the way in around in a circle, they divide that into 12 parts. And instead of basing, you know, calendars on the moon as the Bible does, what they do is they'll base it, that's where you get like astrology signs. So like Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, and they base it on the orbit of the planet. So they take that orbit, divide it into 12 because 360 degrees, which is a circle, is completely div easily divided into 12. And each little orbit they take as a new sign like Aries and Libra and Virgo, and they use those to worship the host of heaven the 12 signs. But the other option they give us, so notice how you see though, in the Bible, those signs that the Bible is talking about are lights, not terrestrial planes. They are lights in the firmament. Then the other option was constellations. So the other synonym for planets was constellations. And mind you, this is God's word. This is not just something I'm taking off the internet. This is in the 1611 version of the Bible. So constellation, if we look that up in the Bible, which is also in the 1611, the word constellation comes up one time, and it's in Isaiah 13, verse 10. And it says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So what I want you to see here is the Bible says the stars of heaven and this is the only time the word constellation is used. The stars of heaven and so it's saying it's different than the stars. So I'm not saying there's no such thing as planets. I'm just saying planets are not what you think they are. They're just balls of light. According to the Bible, remember the Bible has to be your main authority. But notice what it says in Isaiah 13 verse 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to, to shine. So all of those objects, remember we went over in Genesis 1, that they were all given for signs and seasons and to give light upon the earth. So all of those objects are no longer giving light. The sun is not giving light, the moon is not giving light, the stars are not giving light, and the constellations. So what that means is that planets are, are light givers. They give light just like stars do. They give light just like the sun does, and they give light just like the moon does. And the other point I want to make is that when what this verse is talking about is talking about the day of the Lord. When Jesus comes back, the Bible says, that he comes with power and great glory, and that every eye shall see him. Well, most people think of is they think of, okay, the sun is going to be darkened, and the moon will be darkened, and the stars also, most people who also believe in the heliocentric model, will say that the stars also will be darkened. But they forget about the planets, and the Bible is saying that the planets must also be darkened. Because when Jesus comes back with power and great glory, the entire sky, the entire sky, will be dark because he's going to come with great glory, which means light, great light, and every eye will see him. Every eye is able to see Jesus Christ because there's no more light in heaven when he's coming. And then they turn back on after, you know, the wrath, you know, during the wrath of God. But when Jesus comes with the clouds, there's no light on in heaven, no sun, no moon giving light, no stars giving light, and no planets giving light. So that is what the planets are. The planets are balls of light. Even space.com admits it. I looked up planet on space.com just for the origin of what the world thinks the word came from. And they say the word is typically traced back to the ancient Greek who believed that the earth was stationary at the center of the universe while objects in the sky revolved around it. Granted, I don't I believe that the earth is flat and everything in the sky revolves in and around it, in it, 
and around it, not, not outside. There's no such thing as space. But they also say the word is typically traced back to the ancient Greeks. The Greek term asters planetea means wandering stars. A star is a ball of light. And they, they then say and describe the tiny lights that moved across the sky more dramatically than stars when compared over weeks and months. That's why they're called the 12 signs. It doesn't mean that there's 12 planets. It means that they are for signs in 12 different times. They're moving at different rates. And they call them tiny lights. Tiny lights. Because they are tiny lights. Everybody knew this previously. It's just we have to reteach it to the world because we've all been so brainwashed. And I hope you will just take the Bible for what it says because the Bible gives us three options for that word planet. Constellations and 12 signs. And planet is a perfect word, but it's a light. You have to, you, if you have the right idea, then planet is the perfect word. It's a light. It's just different than a star. And it has to turn off when Jesus returns. And I hope that helps you to understand that word a little better. And uh, God bless you. Have a great day.